This is just a basic factoring question. You should absolutely answer this question by factoring. So just to review how that works, we take a uh, quadratic, and that's what we're given here. And then if we want to split it into these kind of parentheses pieces, we are hopefully going to have the first number be 1, right? So notice how there's no number in front of that x squared. If there's no number in front of it, that means that the number is 1. That's what we want. Any other number there and things get more complicated, but most of the time it will be 1. So we, that's why we don't normally think about this, but it's important for the type of factoring we're about to do, which is now we need numbers that add to 3 and multiply to negative 40. Okay, so if you get that confused, just look at the, the letters that I wrote above those two pieces, right? A and M. Which letter comes first in the alphabet? A does. So A addition is going to come first when we go through this factoring process. However, when I'm trying to solve and factor, I'm much more focused on the negative 40. Because with most numbers, there are only limited combinations that will multiply to that number. So I'm kind of just going to try things out, right? So I, I, some people make a little chart. Um, some people do something like this where they're like, okay, I need two numbers that multiply to negative 40, and then they're going to add to uh, 3. And so I don't know if that's useful or not, but we can just try some things, right? So we could do uh, negative 4 and 10. Now, if we add those together, that would be 6, right? So that doesn't work. But notice those two options are kind of there in both choices A and D, but we got to try something else. So let's use the choices, right? Let's try negative 5 and 8. So negative 5 and 8. 8 minus 5 is 3, so that works. And just to see if we flipped it and we had negative 8 and positive 5, like choice C, that would give us negative 3, which doesn't work. So this is now then just these two numbers here um, in this row are just kind of taken as the factor. So this is going to come out and give us x minus 5 times x plus 8, which is choice B, which is the answer. That is absolutely the best way to do it. And I even slowed it down just to kind of review factoring for you in case you're confused. But if you're still confused, we have another option. I don't really recommend it here, but we could, maybe this is a good example of just maybe, for those of you who already get this, you might want to watch just to review the arithmetize strategy. Basically, if we have one of these questions that like says which equ uh, equation is a, or expression is equivalent to the one we're given, and the x's here are not really numbers in the sense that like we don't need to solve for them. We don't need to solve for x. It is just a placeholder. Arithmetize says, well, if x doesn't matter, maybe we can just make it whatever number we want and see what happens from there. And so that's what we could do in this case. We could just pick something like x is equal to 1, and that would let us solve this expression, right? So 1 squared is 1. 3 times 1 is 3 minus 40. So that's 4 minus 40 is negative 36. So now I have a number instead of an expression. And since the answer choices are supposed to be equivalent expressions, then I should get the same number when I plug in 1, right? So I'm making x1 kind of in an arbitrary way. I could make it 100 if I wanted to. I could make it 73. I wouldn't do that because those are weird numbers, but I'm picking a simple number that's going to let me see how this expression kind of does, it that becomes an arithmetic equation. So if we go through the choices now, uh, we would have, in this case, 1 minus 4 times 1 plus 10, right? So 1 minus 4 is negative 3, 1 plus 10 is 11, so that's negative 33, not negative 36. That would mean that that choice is wrong. But watch what happens when we do it in choice B. We have 1 minus 5 times 1 plus 8. 1 minus 5 is negative 4, 1 plus 8 is 9, and negative 4 times 9 is negative 36. So that looks pretty good. And look, we need to check every single answer choice. That's how this strategy works, is sometimes things go bad. I'm going to kind of skip it here. 1 minus 8 is negative 7. 1 plus 5 is 6, so that's negative 42, not negative 36. And 1 minus 10 is negative 9. 1 plus 4 is 5, so that would be negative 45, also wrong. That arithmetic strategy is definitely not efficient here. There are going to be cases where it's absolutely the way to go. And so maybe here, if you understand it, then it'll be easier when the questions get harder to do the same strategy. But guys, you really just need to know how to factor and do some basic algebra. A lot of this test is that, and the strategies are powerful, but 
if you can't really do something like factoring, you're in a lot of trouble for the SAT. So spend some time practicing that.